Hello, well, praise God. Hi, this is Dr. Brian Adams, and as always, it's good to talk to you here on our studio, Greater Works Studio program, Faith is Now. Is your faith activated now? Are you ready? Well, I believe after you finish listening to this series that we're talking here from the Doctrines of Christ, I believe it's going to help you understand how the kingdom set up and how things are working. This one particularly, we're in the place, I'll read to you from Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 through 3, but we're going to be talking about resurrection from the dead. So let's go ahead and go to the Word. Join me if you would. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God, of doctrines of baptisms, of laying on of hands, and of resurrection from the dead, the one we're talking about today, and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. Resurrection from the dead. Hmm. Jesus was raised from the dead in three days after his death on Calvary. I know that's a message and a story, the passions of Christ. You've heard preached probably every Easter and maybe many times in between. But Jesus was raised from the dead in three days. He prophesied that. He said that uh, uh, this temple will be torn down and raised up in three days. They thought he meant the physical temple, which I think uh, took about 46 years to build. They were spiritual, but yet blinded to not understand spiritual things. If there was no resurrection, then we have no faith, no religion. Resurrection, a Greek word, anastasis, a standing or rising again, a raising from the dead, a resurrection. And that's exactly what Christ did. He said, I have been given the power to lay down this body, my life, but he'd also received the power from the Father to raise back up from the dead. John chapter 11, verse 25 through 26. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet he shall live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. This is your eternal spirit he's talking about. Believest thou this? He was saying, because remember when I gave you the definition of resurrection, anastasis, a standing or rising again, he was saying, I am a stand-up power. Mm, that's powerful. Boy, I like that. I understand my power. If you've been knocked down, I will put you on your feet again. Boy, we can just get to shouting and doing the Holy Ghost 2 stuff right there. He's a stand-up God, stand-up power. That if you've been knocked down and you believe in his name and the faith in his name, you can rise again. Mm, I love that. He'll put you back on your feet again. In the natural, he'll stand you up again. In the spiritual, after death, when he returns, you and I, we will rise again. Mm, there's no power like the Holy Ghost power. He was given authority and power to lay down his life, to die. And remember the passage of Scripture that said there's no greater thing that a man can do than to lay down his life for his friend? He calls you his friend, and he laid down his life for you and me. While we were still yet sinners, Christ died. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 19 through 20. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Paul was saying, since Christ is raised from the dead, this guarantees us that all who have died in faith will also rise up again one day. You got to die in faith. You got to be born again. You must accept the works of him that the Father sent. God so loved the world that he sent his son. He told when he was standing there to raise Lazarus from the dead, he, she goes, I know in the end days, that he'll rise up in the resurrection. He said, no, no, no. We're not talking about an event, the resurrection. He looked at him and said, I am the resurrection. Well, that's crazy. I mean, to have that authority, to have that power, that the God that created the heavens and the world has said, man, I've been given the authority to lay down my life and the power to take it back up again. So as he died, he died in faith, 
proclaiming that he was going to get back up again, and he did it. I've been to Israel nine times, and every time I go, every time I go to the, the tomb, I rejoice when I see. I know it's empty. I've been there so many times. I just like going, I kind of tiptoe there and kind of peek in. It just gives me a great joy that of all the religions on the world, all the ones that have prophets, they've all died, but we in Christianity are the only ones that can say, our prophet is no longer dead. After three days, he got back up. He's alive again. In the Old Testament, there were recorded three people raised from the dead. In Jesus' ministry, three were raised from the dead. It was almost like it was a mirror of the Old Testament to the New Testament. Christ is raised from the dead, tasting death for all men, and captured the keys to the hell in the grave, and he will never die again. He didn't rise just spiritually. There's some religions that say he just rose uh, spiritually, not physically, and that's why on the road to Emmaus he appeared in another form. No, in his supernatural glorified nat a natural body that he had now that's been raised from the dead. He has the power to, to do that. And to he appeared behind walls and through locked doors. He can supernaturally, you know, I guess when you're resurrected and you're the Lord, matter doesn't matter. He can go right through that. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, now that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture. That's what the Scripture says. And that's what Christ did. And he that was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. This is truly our cornerstone of our faith. No resurrection, my friend, no faith. Nothing for us to shout about. Nothing for us to give glory about. Nothing for us to have hope that if he raised the first fruits, we're going to be additional fruit that's also going to raise from that. No resurrection, no faith. After his resurrection... It was confirmed by many witnesses. It is recorded in Scripture. It was confirmed by many witnesses. It was recorded in Scripture ten different times he appeared to different groups of people. He appeared to Mary Magdalene. She went to the garden. He appeared to her. He appeared to other women. He appeared to Peter. He appeared to the two men on the road to Emmaus. Then to ten disciples all at once. And the reason he was 10, remember Thomas wasn't there and Judas had already killed himself. So the remaining 10 would have been 11 if Thomas was there, but he appeared to those 10. And then eight days later, he reappeared again to the 11 disciples, which now included Thomas. And in between, when he appeared to the 10 and the 11, when Thomas came back, they told him, he said, I'll have to see the nail prints in his feet, hands. I'll have to touch the wound in his side. And Jesus, when he appeared to the eleven now, this is crazy. He knew what Thomas had said. He knows what you're thinking. He knows what, what he can hear you. You know, there's an old song, no, no one knows what goes on behind closed doors. Man, you can't say that with Jesus Christ because he knows all things. That's right. I said God knows all things. So he appeared and he looked at Thomas and said, here, look at, look at the nail prints here. Touch the wound on my side. Man, that must have been a crazy feeling. The other guys are standing on grinning. We already seen him. We already know this. That's so funny that that would be what happened. But we look here. Then he appeared to seven disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He appeared to as many as 500 people at the same time. There's so many recorded passages of the resurrection and the proof. He appeared to, I'm sure it was designated. It wasn't just for just anybody out of the world. It was people that he needed to that could be trustworthy, that were men and women of renown. He appeared to many as 500 people at the same time. He appeared to James, his brother. Oh, wow, remember the scripture says his brother didn't believe in him. Now I'm like, oh, okay, so you wasn't lying, Jesus. You wasn't kidding. You are Christ, the Messiah. He appeared to the 11 at his ascension. When he blessed them, talked to them about the kingdom, and then he, he just levitated and floated up in a cloud. And as they were looking and worshiping him, it said that there were two angels, two men in white on the side said, the same Jesus you see us sending will return in the same fashion and the same manner. Mm. Luke writes in his book of the Acts that Jesus 
shows himself alive. Mm. This is powerful. Acts chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. Listen to this. This is very powerful. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen in them 40 days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Man, I wish they could have recorded. Uh, I'm sure a lot of it's in the written word of God that we have now. But I'm sure there's things that he talked and he, and, and he corrected and he spoke to his disciples pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father which saith, Ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, excuse me, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Now, they had to wait and it turned out being 50 days. But now the Holy Spirit's been sent. We don't have to tarry. We don't have to wait. We simply must be born again and we can ask that His Spirit would come into us. We become the temple of the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, my Father and I will make our abode inside of you. Just recently I was in North Carolina and I was doing a healing school, Greater Work School of Healing. And I looked around the room and I just felt led to ask this question. I said, how many of you have not been baptized in the Holy Ghost and would like to be baptized with receiving evidence of speaking in tongues, but also that you'll receive the power to become a witness? And, and about 11 of them raised their hands. I was shocked. Oh, man, you're, you're wanting to pray for the sick. You don't even have the, the empowering anointing upon you. That, that can uh, give you the, the power to do this. So 11 of them came up. We prayed for them. Instantly, they all became, the atmosphere totally changed in the room. The people were filled with the Holy Ghost. One man came to me, him and his wife. He said, I've been trying to get the Holy Ghost for 50 years. Now, religion was standing in his way. His natural mind could not understand the things of God. That night, uh, he went home and his wife and him have, have matching reclining chairs that sit side by side as they watch TV. And she took the remote, turned the TV off, looked over at him and said, would you like to pray in tongues for the first time together? He smiled. They held hands. They prayed in tongues until they drifted off to sleep. That's a, such a, a, it reminds me of the movie, The Notebook. I'm like, that's so sentimental, so, so awesome that he, they wanted to pray in the Holy Ghost together. Christ raised from the dead. And if he said, it's expedient that I go to the Father, he couldn't have gone if he hadn't raised from the dead. And when he was raised from the dead, he said, the Father will send the Spirit. Praise God that He sent it. You don't have to tarry. You don't have to wait. Matter of fact, while you're watching this program right now, just call on the name of Jesus. Say, baptize me with the Holy Spirit and fire. Mm. And being assembled together, commanded them they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which He said, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Jesus said there would be two separate resurrections for two different groups. John chapter 5, verse 28. And shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Mm. Let me read that again. And shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, that's going to be you and me, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. One resurrection for the saved, one resurrection for the unsaved. When will these resurrections take place? Uh, when will, I'll ask you it again, when will these resurrections take place? Resurrection for the saved. That will occur simultaneously with the rapture. When the rapture comes, when the eastern sky splits, when he comes with tens of thousands of his angels and the, the trumpet sounds and the voice of an archangel proclaiming, and as we or those that are alive will be caught up with the Lord, the dead shall be raised. So there'll be a resurrection for those who die as a martyr during the tribulation. Final resurrection for the unsaved at the end of the millennial reign of Christ. Though that way, you see, there's going to be a total of three resurrections. Let me do it again. There'll be a resurrection for the saved that will occur simultaneously with the rapture. One. There'll be a resurrection for those who die as martyrs during the tribulation. That's two. Then there's a final resurrection for the unsaved after the end of the millennial reign of Christ. That's giving you three resurrections. Two for the saved, dead and alive, martyrs at the end of the tribulation, and one for the unsaved at the end of the millennial reign of Christ. 
First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 15 through 18. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Is that going to be remarkable? Wherever. It's not going to no longer be a thing of faith, blind faith, not by sight but by faith. We will be able to see Him. We'll be able to participate, fellowship with Him. Man, I'm telling you, God is good. We love Him. He loves us. And to be able to fellowship in His presence, His glory will be the only light. There'll be no sun. There'll be no moon at that time. We're going to be in, the, in heaven. And He, the Father, and the Son, they're going to be the light that shines forth. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 through 54. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Woo, glory, we're going to be changed. For this corruptible, this earthen suit, must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. That's right, when we get that immortal body and, and man will never die again, the tears that will be cried then will only be tears of joy and worship and praise. Praise God, I'm excited about that. Man, I'm telling you, we live in this world, there's warfare in this world, but let the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ rise inside of you. God so loves us, He sent His Son. He's coming back. Are you ready? You must be born again. Philippians chapter 3, verses 20 through 21. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. Oh, we're going to take this thing and put on a new thing. Come on, somebody. Oh, I like that. I'm believing. Man, I got my faith out that, man, I'm going to be ripped when I get my new glorified body. Come on. There are going to be some muscles. I'm going to have a six-pack instead of this big old cake hanging here. I'm believing God to be blessed and to be ever healed, and to be ever holy. That's going to be such a wonderful time. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Second resurrection after the tribulation. Revelation chapter 20, verses 4 through 6. And I saw thrones... And they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again till the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that is part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. That second death is to be eternally separated from God the Father and to go into that eternal prison, which is called hell, that lake of fire. Blessed and holy is he that is part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Revelations 20, verses 12 through 15. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of these things, which were written in the book according, now listen to this, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to his works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. 
And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast also into the lake of fire. Wow. Don't want to go there. Don't want to experience that at all. There will be three resurrections. The first resurrection will happen in the rapture. The dead shall rise first, and those that are alive shall be caught up in the air. This is found, we already read it, but I'm going to give you the address again, okay? This is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15 through 18. That's the first resurrection. The second resurrection for the saved happens after the tribulation. This is a martyr's resurrection. All those that were beheaded and killed because they refused to take the mark in their hand or their forehead. They refused to worship the beast and they were killed. So that second resurrection is for the saved. Happens after the tribulation. This is the martyr's resurrection. Those that don't accept the mark or worship the beast are beheaded. And this is found. Do you have your notes ready? Do you have that pen? This is found in Revelations chapter 2, verses 12 through 15. Now the third resurrection is for the unsaved. After the millennial after the rapture, after the caught up into the air with the first rapture, after the second rapture, after the millennial reign, the martyrs shall come. This is the third resurrection. And it's after everything said and done, all those that have died unsaved, not born again, this resurrection is for the unsaved. After the millennial reign of Christ is when this resurrection will happen. This, my friend, can be found in Revelations chapter 20, verses 12. Hmm. Let me go over that again, because I want you to understand this. These are the doctrines of Christ. We have to have that. Let me go here again. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 54. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when the corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal have put on immortality, then we shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Philippians, I'm reading these scriptures again. Philippians 3, verse 20 through 21. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We shall change our vile body, <clears throat> excuse me, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. We have the first resurrection, my friends. And this first resurrection is when the rapture happens, when the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then those that are still alive shall be caught up in the air. The second rapture, that's going to happen after the millennial reign. After Christ comes, sets up his, his throne, he'll reign for a thousand years. And then what's really crazy is after a thousand years, Lucifer is loosed again. Because all these people that are married and born and had children, these people have to be able to be tempted. They have to be able to, to choose between evil and between good what happens there. But, so we get the first resurrection, the rapture, and the... The dead in Christ will come first, and then those caught up in the rapture. Then we have the second uh, resurrection. That resurrection is after the millennial reign, that thousand years, that the, uh, those that died, it's called like a martyr's resurrection. Those that died, they were beheaded, they were killed because they didn't worship the beast, and uh, this is what happened. They were raised up. The very last third one, so those first two are for believers. The very last one's for the unsaved. After the millennial reign is done, the dead will give up, the sea will give up, <clears throat> the grave will give up all the dead, all those that are non-believers, and they shall be judged, and the second death shall be placed upon them. Man, I wouldn't want to be them. Man, I'm telling you, I would not want to be them. So, the first one is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15 through 18. It's the first resurrection. The second resurrection is found in Revelation chapter 2, verses... 12 through 15. And the third resurrection is found in Revelation chapter 20, verse 12. So two of them is in Revelation, one of them is in 1 Thessalonians. This is part of the doctrines of Christ. Let me read to you how that goes. So we're coming to the end here. 
Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works of faith toward God, of doctrine of baptisms, of laying on of hands, of resurrection from the dead, and eternal judgment. This would do if God permits. So you see, each one of those we've already had taught on. Now this one was a resurrection from the dead. And then you're knowing that even though you're saved, there'll be a judgment for believers. You'll be judged for every idle word. You'll be judged uh, for the works you've done in this body. Then those that haven't accepted Christ, they'll be judged also. So don't just think, well, I'm saved. Everything goes. I can do anything. No. You're going to be held accountable for what you do. Now the free gift, no works. You were saved. Nobody can boast it was a gift. But now Paul writes and tells us, he said, now that you're saved, work out this salvation. Be a steward of it. Walk holy, walk righteous. Be a true representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what? Maybe for some reason you're watching this video and you're not born again. Let's go ahead and pray. You must be born again. I want to give you an opportunity to accept Jesus as your Savior and or to recommit if you were already saved and maybe you're backslidden. Pray this prayer. Say, I forgive every person that's ever hurt me. I even forgive myself. I let all the past go. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe He died for my sins. And then I believe He raised from the dead, just like this teaching was about resurrection. Christ, after three days, raised from the dead. Be my Lord and Savior and forgive me of all my sins. I want to be born again. Be my Lord. He not only died for our sins, but he was beaten for our healing, for diseases. You got a problem, put your hand somewhere. The pain, the tumor, the deaf ear, the bad eye, wherever you have pain, sickness, or disease, put your hand. You'll be the hands today that's going to bring healing. I'm going to be the voice. I break the power of every cursed spell, incantation of witchcraft. I break it right now in the name of Jesus. I remit you of every iniquity the punishment that came upon the sins of your forefathers, maternal and paternal. I break the power of that right now in Jesus' name. Blindness, deafness, go. Mute spirits leave, loose their tongues in the name of Jesus. Arthritis, bursitis, fibromyalgia, every pain leave. Cancer, disease, leave this body. I forbid you spirits to return in the name of Jesus. Tumors dissolve, growth disappear, fall off their bodies right now in the name of Jesus. Satan, you are defeated by the blood of Jesus Christ. We come against you and tell you, loose God's people. Mental instabilities go. You know, if you just gave your heart to the Lord or if you received a healing, begin to do something you couldn't do before. You see the tumor's gone. You see better, hear better. There's an email address and a WhatsApp number. You can text us. You can send us an email. Let us know what God has just done for you. We want to rejoice with you. And thank you for tuning in to Faith Is Now. This is Dr. Brian Ams. I'm expecting everyday miracles every day for you. God bless you. Until next time.